type performance, how important it is to not just stay in one sport in your early to middle part of your career. So whenever you get the opportunity to explore different sports, to, to go for it. And it's definitely been on my radar the last couple of years through, through largely through the podcast. So for sure, if you asked me three years ago or even two years ago, I was pretty narrow focused on AFL and specializing in that sport. But I've soon realized through interviewing people on the podcast and people that I highly respect that if you just stay in one sport, you're not going to grow as much uh, and stretch your thinking compared to uh, when you're needing to learn new environments. Um, so to be the best coach you can possibly be, um, you want to make sure that you're, you're where you get, if you get the chance to, obviously jobs are, uh, there's not a lot of opportunities out there. As we know, it's highly competitive, but if you do get the opportunity to move sports, move codes, it's certainly something that I'm looking forward to take on that challenge and I'll report back and over my the next six months to a year to share any learnings that I get from this transition. We recently finished our high performance certificate where we had 20 coaches over a month where I presented on how to set up your resume to stand out from the competition, which was week one, week two, how to maximize your network to get an understanding of what jobs are out there. Week three was around presenting. Typically there's a two stage process for the full time jobs. And that's what this whole month certificate was around, was landing your first full-time job in professional sport. And my tips on the experience that I've had over the three different sort of roles and the different processes you can go through. And then uh, week three, which is on presenting. So if you're interested in that, we have already, well, there's going to be 10 spots available. We'll next open it up in October. Um, it's $1,200, but I've broken it down into four payments of Two hundred ninety nine dollars over a quarterly. So if you want to chip away at that and give yourself the best chance in two thousand twenty six to land your first full time job, or perhaps to give yourself a promotion if you're part time to get a promotion within your organisation, or at the end of the, of the two thousand twenty five season, you're going to be um, putting your best foot forward to give yourself your best chance. Then I highly recommend you taking this opportunity. I've broken down today's podcast into four key areas. So firstly, we've got speed development. We've got acceleration, we've got agility, and then we've got gain speed. So of that speed development, we've got three key areas. Your ability to start, to go from a slow speed to, to explode and go to a really fast rapid pace, obviously really important in field sports. Uh, agility, your ability, your lateral speed, both from an offensive point of view, so the forwards and typically the midfielders, and then also from a defensive point of view, your ability to close space and corral, and then game speed, putting it all together, the cognitive point of view, typically anticipation beats acceleration, beats speed. We want to make sure we've got that uh, chest up, eyes up on the game, uh, and you're working on those um, coordinated positions with your posture. And that's where a lot of the French posh stuff can be really uh, helpful. As high performance coaches, we love to do a needs analysis. We need to break down where you are and you want to do a bit of an audit on your group. You get an idea of what they did over the off season. Um, what does the coach want? How does the coach want to play? Uh, and what qualities do we add on the squad to help um, that game model? So a good example of that is like a counter move and jump. If you can jump 60 centimeters, but it takes you a whole second of that contraction time compared to someone who can jump 50 centimeters, but half the time in 0.5 milliseconds, you're going to obviously get to that aerial ball a lot quicker on the field. Now, by the time you're, you've left the ground, the person who can jump 60 centimeters is still on the ground. So ultimately you're going to win that contest, whether it be an aerial ball for Aussie rules football, a header in soccer, or an aerial ball in uh, rugby league. Speed is key. So how can we improve their steering? How can we make them just a little bit stronger, a little bit, and a little bit faster? Perhaps they don't have the genes or they're just really new in their role. They've never been in a high performance environment. So by, if it's that the case, by simply putting them into a program, they're going to start to develop some qualities. Typically we probably want to develop if they're raw, the strength first, because that's going to influence their speed, their power, everything, their mechanics. And then once that's reached to a certain level, like around that two times body weight or 1.3 for upper body strength, then we want to focus on their ability to maintain that strength. And how can we generate those forces faster? So that's where the velocity-based training can come in the gym. 
and improving their max velocity and their ability to accelerate and change direction on the field. But yeah, start with strength. Then we want to develop slow, short stretching cycle type of work. So how well can they jump for height? That typically that power training, so loaded jumps, medicine ball throws, develop some good mechanics and efficiency with your like rudiment plyos and plyometric ability, and then really start to, once you've got that good sound experience and work under them, they've got good foundational development. Then we can start looking at adding in some more fancy stimuluses, slightly contrast training or more complex training, and also challenging their coordination 